Yeah, we'll see what NIP does with their third ban as well. C9E does. Is it the Fizz? See when that icon shows up in the screen right there because that is one to be worried about. And I think Fizz is pretty good against Nidalee as well. No, it's actually the Morgana from Mid. The hmm. first pick Nidalee does come through. So Interesting. It was a big problem for them already last game. Banning at the Morgana here. Yeah. I guess it's a comfort pick that they're taking away, but I I feel like taking away the Fizz would be kind of a blow to the morale of NIP. Yeah, well, unless they really think that Nidalee's going to shut it down anyway. He blind picked the mid lane Nidalee, saying, yeah, I know that's an option for you. In fact, NIP forced a ban LeBlanc for themselves. That was one ban that CNE e had usually been using here against Nuke Deck, so the threat of that champion too much for them. And now we'll see. Yeah, Thresh, Shivana, two big picks, I feel like. Would make sense here. Yeah, those are pretty big for them. I don't know about the Shivana though. Mm. Uh, the yeah, first, lost to Jax. First pick early Shivana. Showing that one so early, I don't think it would be. Uh, yeah, there that we makes go. Sense. Go back to the rise instead. He looked a lot better on that one, even with all the pressure early. Yeah, okay, it is a Thresh though. It's going to be Mithy once again. I mean, so many saves that game. I figure if he was any champion but Thresh, you would see like four times the kills for C90 in that game. And it there were at least difference. three that would have been definite kills Absolutely. were it not for the Lantern save. Yeah, and just for the picks he managed to make for the team. So he's going to be happy with that one. Thresh still back here for Mithy 0 0, still to play Rise. Blind pick top lane with no top lane bans, really. But last time Odwamna's pick of Shivana didn't work against it. So a thing to keep in mind there. Ko looking at Nocturne right now, saying, let's switch gears, play a different champion maybe on this one. Lucian maybe the pickup as well. And now Lucian, I think, went unbanned last game, but you know, Freeze wanted the drape, but Lucian Zyra here. Interesting. For Voidal and Yarnin. So they have anti dive here. They've got Nidalee, Poke, and then Zyra to sort of deal with the hard engage that inevitably will come when yeah. you run a poke squad. And you know what's interesting actually? I remember at the beginning of the season when it was like a bunch of double bruiser, and I was always wondering like why aren't teams playing Zyra? And the bros would tell me where Zyra is not good against tanks. She can knock up assassins and squishy fighters, but like Mundo doesn't care if Zyra hits you. But now that we're seeing Feral Flare junglers, top laners like Ryze who aren't tanky for a while, it's like, oh, well, suddenly Zyra fits back into that whole mold, and I like how that kind of works with this one. Of course, NIP to make their next two choices, though Nocturne, I mean, heck, they can play the exact same comp if they want to. Yeah, question answered right there. I was asking Dexter, will they just use these comfort champs over and over again? Over? Yes, they will. <laughs> All exactly the same. Yeah, it's actually funny. NIP did the exact same thing in their semifinal. Both games with reason, they ran the exact same lineup. Maybe one champ off, but pretty much the exact same lineup. And once again, they said, hey, we got success with this one. Run it again. All right, Cloud9, though, they have uh, the specific plan here. They've already got two good parts of Poke here. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they got the offensive part, which is Nidalee and Lucian, and they've got the defensive, which is Zyra. Elise is a great jungler that would add a lot more to that. She's great in sieging up, damaging under turrets, as well as uh, taking them if there's nobody there. Two versus yeah. one situations. She can come to the two lane. She can add a lot of damage and harass under turret. Easy dive as well if somebody sticks around. So they grab Elise Jax. Now, I want to see actually if this happens here too. Yeah, Fizz comes through for Ninjas and Pajamas. Fully the same lineup for NIP. Same, same game plan. New one from Cloud9 Eclipse, so I believe Every single champion now different here for them. And Cloud9 Eclipse have to have seen this one coming because yeah. they didn't change uh, anything in the bands. They didn't ban out anything that uh, Ninjas in Pajamas used, and they didn't try and take anything away either. So yeah. this second time around, if you lose to this team comp twice in a row, yeah. same time around, then that is definitely on you. The, the la they would get another game even. They would even get another chance. Sure. In this case, we would definitely see them change something in the band space. Yeah. But really, they should have corrected everything in this um, pick bands right now. And I actually, I feel like I really like C9E's changeup right here because they went with a very good aggressive early siege composition. Mm -hmm. right, set up Zyra plans, Lucian can wave clear needly for all the javelins and whatnot. At least the early game jungler to set your team up as well. Like I feel like there's so much room for C9E to tread water or go up in the first 15, 20 minutes and then turn it on, siege an enemy tower. Fizz doesn't have any real items yet. Nullifies that lead. Draven hasn't cashed any stacks yet. He's not far ahead. All these things could snowball for C9E. Exactly. I really like hitting that point before Fizz gets Lich Bane, before Liz gets Azania's, um, 
he he won't have the uh, escapability that he needs. He won't have the burst that he needs. Even if he does get somebody, your Zyra ultimate is going to be down. Also, the Zyra passive. If they go for Zyra, yeah. she's not only going to be knocking people up, it's a lot of true damage as well. She's great at um, sieging up turrets because she can harass people under the turret with plants, like you said. And also, starting Spell Thieves, she does a lot of damage to turrets. Yep. And it's going to start out with the Spell Thieves in this one. So let's see what the lane matchups end up being. Odwamda starts with the Doran's Blade. Uh, we'll see if that means much for him here. Doran Shield will help you, I think, a bit more against Rise, but heck, if he goes to jungle at the start, because the two-on-ones, Blade is the better choice. Now, I think there should be a lot of focus up towards this Rise and Jax matchup. Rise is a very snowball-y um, lane matchup here. Mm -hmm. If Jax gets ahead and he can all-in Rise, Rise cannot get away from that. There's always the opportunity of a leap strike. If he's ever in range for harassing Jax, Jax will be able to leap strike on him, uh, counter strike him, and Elise is easy to go for early dives. So this Jax versus Rise matchup, if left unattended by NIP, then it should be an easy move for a Jax and Elise combo to take advantage of the squishy Rise. Yeah. See if they can find it. We'll see. I feel like there's a lot of good options here, right? You have you have Jax Elise with so much gank pressure, but at the same time, again, Dexter talked about putting Ryze in a two-on-one and making him just sit there and try to farm for a long time to catch up, giving your team room to make moves. Now, to be fair, when that happened last game, C9E, they didn't um, they didn't make a big push bottom lane. They let Nuke Duck clear that entire wave without sieging the turret, mm -hmm. and that wave went to waste. That that opening where you can all show up bottom lane. Not only did it go to waste, it went to the champion that has the hardest time CSing, Fizz, mm -hmm. at the pr at the worst time possible to be giving him money. Yeah. So he was going to be okay, but Cloud and Eclipse definitely look like they want to do things early on in the game. To point out, Ko did start Doran's Blade for himself. So he's going to be all about being able to fight someone else in the jungle early on. That does slow his jungle slightly. It has to. Hunter's Machete just does more damage there, but if you can make things happen with this one, if you can get the fight going on early on, you can knock down Holberto and maybe, maybe get a gank. Yeah, especially with a lot of Elise junglers running attack speed from runes. Mm -hmm. uh, increases the benefit of that. Looks like 2 vs 1 initiated by NIP. They don't want any part of that Jax Rise dive capability. And Elise will be making use of that Doran's as well when she goes down to siege up on a turret. Mm -hmm. We're going to see what the other guys can do with this one, honestly. Two and a half minutes in, Cloud9 Eclipse still... Just sit in the lanes for now, of course, early game. Why wouldn't it be? The jungler's taking, in some cases, their sweet time getting around. Looks like it is going to be Jax taking the wolf camp for himself. Roberto does grab double buffs, but not yet level 3. He's leeching some of that experience with Ryze. So Zero Zero will have a bit of experience in this matchup. And we'll see what happens when the junglers make their way to the lanes. Pretty standard course here. Now, of course, to keep in mind, Ninjas and Pajamas are the team to have set up the, uh, the two-on-one swap. Now, Doran's Blade does uh, do more for killing turrets, so maybe that still helps C9E with this one. But we'll see what ends up paying off. We'll also see if they actually can find Rise, because Zoro Zero is going for the leech strategy, mm -hmm. trying to leech experience and actually uh, run him out of the bush there. Yeah. So kind of good for time. him. He won't get caught there by Elise, because Elise would have caught him from the back. Look how much, look how sort of greedy. Cloud9 Eclipse are playing right now. So Roberto goes in to try to take down the turret. He's going to join in there for the three-on-one. Uh, but with C9E already knowing that Zoro Zero has to hide back, Ko is just like, well, I'm going to kill some jungle camps. I'll mm -hmm. take away the white camp. I'll kill away maybe some of these wolves right here. And there's enough damage coming out from Lucian Zyra that he doesn't have to do anything but counter jungle. So they're counting on the top turret having that champion uh, damage reduction to make up for the fact that their jungler isn't helping with the turret damage. Now, though, after the jungle is cleared, um, he's actually going again for the kill on Ryze. This is something he did last time. They weren't able to get the kill last time because he was Evelyn. With Elise, it's even higher probability of getting that kill, though. Very, very strong tower dive here. However, wasting more time on turret damage, and they've actually recalled Fulberto here who, as well, took a white camp. So he got jungle money, and he's going to be there to defend with Ryze. So this dive that Ko's been waiting for and been wasting yeah. a lot of his time for will not gain them any benefit. 
He no. just wasted a lot of time standing there. Absolutely. And the top lane turret finally now goes down at 449 into the game. Six CS for Jax, three for Rise right here. We're going to see if these guys can pick up much more for themselves. But I feel like Odromna has a little bit more money for himself overall. Cloud9 Eclipse not leaving this lane setup right there, shoving it all the way into the turret, shoving the cannon wave First in. move mid. So he doesn't even have to go for a tower dive. Fizz cannot get any of this mid lane farm because two range champions, Elise is amazing at harassing under turrets. This is one of the best things about Elise as a jungler in the two versus one swaps. They can apply pressure to these lanes very early. Mm -hmm. Looks like he's going to leave his way out of the mid lane pretty soon, though. Voidal and Yarnin actually still staying around, but I gotta say, Nocturne Rise, I feel like is a bit scary now that Zoro Zero has got level three for himself. There's a good amount of damage to be worried about. Zyra has no escapes for herself. Fresh here too. Okay, they might have to be careful, but it looks like Nocturne's gonna make his way back around. Mithy just gonna play defense for Zoro Zero. They let Freeze make his own way around the map. He's gonna join with his dual lane as well, so. The NIP looking just to hmm. send their guys bottom. Yeah, they uh, at least going back to the jungle and not continuing pressure on Fizz. I feel like they could have uh, kept up that two-man siege there with Nidalee plus, plus Elise, keeping Fizz down further. I mean, look at his CS. He's actually above Nidalee. They haven't been able to punish him like you would really want to. Okay, well, see that pays off anytime soon. Once the first item comes through for the mid laners, we'll see who does what with it. Pebbevin, Cougar Form, just going to kill these minions rather quickly for himself. Pounces for it. 44 to 44, completely identical that mid lane. Freeze 49 to the 42 of Yernin. It's going to be a very scary Draven as time moves on. Just one turret picked up each team for the early game antics. Kenner Dugney for Ko might get him a little bit ahead. Actually, Rust Sork Shoes, so still no jungle item for the jungle Elise here of Cloud9 Eclipse. Whereas Madra's already there for Holberto. We'll see yet, if that matters much. Yet he's still spending a lot of time clearing camps here. Uh, he's moved back over into the jungle, clearing raids. He should really be pressuring this duo bottom because there's no turret for them to rely on. Mm -hmm. um, and that would also afford them dragon control. Yeah. Well, there's a couple of wards put down. The ping's out for Mithy. You see him. Yeah. Okay, well, Ko's definitely going to know that they realize he was there, so he can assume a dragon ward here. That's fine for himself. Puts the Trinket Ward down across though into the Tri Brush. And now they'll see Freeze and Mythic. Gilberto's going to grab his red buff. Level 5 still. Seven and a half minutes in. Nope, there's level 6. Ulti just now for Nocturne is available. Febbivin 7, Nuke Duck 7 as well. So despite the level 1 antics, you know, level lead or the, the pace of, of experience here, still pretty good for the NIP jungler. Yeah, Ko is actually pretty far behind there, you can see, um, as far as experience is concerned. Not really close to that six yet. Halfway there. Maybe they can actually put some pressure on to rise because they haven't been able to do much of that yet here. He's got a tier, so no combat stats there. Just mana for him. Very squishy still. Yeah, we'll see if the dive can work now. The minion's getting actually pushing in towards C9E, but Odama's still attacking very ferociously to push the lane back out. But Zero Zero's wave much, much bigger. Although I'm the force towards the background, which does mean that Jax has more minions here and will have more farm available to himself. Play level 6 before too long, but I wonder how the Jax versus Rise late game skilling matchup even goes. Rise, three wards he's placed up here to try and make sure that he doesn't get into any trouble. But Jax could continue to let the wave push against him and draw Rise further into his territory, which would allow for easy gank from Elise. She has a gla gap closer and Rise has set up, or Jax has set up CC. So that, that could be a very dangerous position for Zoro Zero, even though he has so much ward coverage. It's not deep enough. Okay, so. Elise still hard with jungling though. though. What? Yeah, uh, yeah, none of it's unfortunately paid off for him here. He's just kind of treaded water against the Nocturne, who's going to be scaling quite nicely. Uh, Hundo's machete does finally get picked up, though. So Ko has a bit more jungle speed. He will go towards the Golem a bit later on. Alberto to the level 6. Febbevin not going to see him. That ward, I believe, gets undetected as he puts it down across the wall. Ko is 6, not that important for least. Just gives him a Spiderling. He's trying to make a move down bottom. But they're pinging out the wards. All these wards from NIP really causing uh, Ko to second-guess himself. Isn't quite sure where to go. 
He has not switched over to a sweeper. Doesn't have any way to clear them out. But as I said, Jax, he let the wave push against him more. And Zoro Zero used all of his wards up top. He was getting Vision to defend him while he was up at the corner there. He can't push any deeper. And they're getting this freeze off. So we'll, when you're Cloud9 and you're freezing like this, you have to play very carefully on the other side of the map because you know that's where NIP are going to try and make their move. Yeah. You've got Nuke Duck able to run around. Zoro Zero's holding mid for him. So, so many opportunities to make plays. The Nocturne ulti up as well. Plus, keep in mind, there's a Thresh with Flash on the enemy team. There's so many ways to pick up kills for Ninjas in Pajamas. But Zoro Zero says, you know what? Go back towards top. No big deal. And the game continues, though. With everything going on, it's just a 500. This very small gold lead for Cloud9 Eclipse. These teams going to play it safe. Wait for the late game. Wait for Jax and Italy to scale up, or wait for Ryze and, uh, and Fizz to scale up. So what Zoro Zero did is he left the very deep wave, which was dangerous for him, and went mid to share with Nukta. You get a little bit of bonus experience when sharing with someone, so it's not that bad for your team. And he waited for his Trinket Ward to come all the way back up so he could get that deep ward down. And in that time, the wave is eventually going to push back at you because Jax is indeed last hitting. It's not, he's not able to perfectly um, land the very last hit. Uh, and he does add a little bit of damage, shoving the wave back against him. Wow. And a bit of a trade there. Nuke Duck happy to put damage on a Febivin. It's going to be all about the mana bar then if Nidalee can stay healthy because a third of Febivin's health goes down every time Nuke Duck goes in. And at a certain point, you just add Earth and an Ignite, and Nid goes down. Well, you got the barrier as well. Always yeah. got to keep in mind those baits. But yes, Nidalee does have to make sure that she's topping herself off. Can't let one kill go to Fizz. He'll snowball out of control. He's actually got way more CS than you would want on a Fizz this early. You never want that much CS for Fizz. So it's already a dangerous proposition. If he gets a kill, he could easily gain control of the game very quickly. It's going to be a bit of a trade. Not too much happening there in the mid lane. 103 to 104. These guys completely holding equal. Riggle's Lantern does get picked up for Holberto. See if he goes in towards something else there. Plants come down. Bit of damage there for Voidal. Pushing Freeze back just a bit. We're going to see just the minions. Febivin just happy to javelin uh, the melees just to get rid of them. Keep the push going. Nuke Duck not taking too much damage. That goes in. Bit of trade again. Cocoon's not going to land. Jumps back over. You can see Nuke Duck plenty safe right here. You could toss out a taunt or a joke if you wanted to. Wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> Zero Zero actually does not teleport back to lane, though. He's saving that summoner spell cooldown for a, uh, an impending dragon fight. Well, he's got to be scared now uh, of fighting Jax outside of a turret. If he goes up in that long lane, Jax has the 100%. Uh-oh. Oh, smite it up. Actually, by a whole Berto. Not going to be co-picking it up there, but the damage comes through. Forced a flash right there. A little more attacks come off, but really, really well smited. Yeah. The smite actually comes in early, and Hilberto just like last hits it with an auto. So um, the counter jungling does finally come back in. But yeah, Ryze, now that Jax has the slow from a cutlass, Ryze has to be very scared about the all-in from Jax. Can't fight him out in uh, open territory. I think Ko... I mean, I guess they know he's around, so Zero Zero's going to be safe, and now he just reveals himself. Nocturne's waiting in the wings. He's coming over to be in range for the ulti soon. He's they're only there to look for a counter game. Yeah, they're trying to bait the dive right now. It's still dangerous even to bait the dive, though. Yeah, there's so much damage available. Sork Shoe is already done. And actually, it's just the machete for Ko. He's already going towards haunting guys. Again, the engaged Nuke Duck finds some really good damage. Just Q into auto attack is all he needs. Yeah, he's actually up in CS. Even though he hasn't been able to find a kill. He's very, very scary at this point. Bottom lane, it's just because they haven't purchased. That's the only reason they're kind of getting bullied here. Mm -hmm. um, the whole VF sword, because they were able to get back for NIP. Well, they go for the dive here. Ko's wasting they a lot of time. They pink knocked him. They know he's on the bottom side of the map. So Domna goes right across. 
And with the no threat of counter kick, the dive would be potentially there. Zorzor just backs up, though, making Cloud9 Eclipse find their second turret kill. And there's a 1,500 gold discrepancy worth of items in the bottom lane right now. Draven has complete control because he's actually gone back and spent that money. He has the BF sword. Showing your jungler top, this should be a dragon for NIP. But Holbert is taking so much damage holding this blue buff. Yeah. He's down to half. And it would actually be dangerous to go for that dragon against the poke of Nidalee and Zyra. Well, the dive comes in. The flash used by both Cocoon as well. Zero has got nowhere to go. First blood picked yeah. up. Oh, Dom the Pops, the ulti to tank turret shots. He's going to be fine. could answer, though. If they split up here, Hulberto could answer. He doesn't have vision. So close to having vision. He saw him for a quarter second. Didn't pop the ulti. Couldn't quite jump in in time. Wave clears, but there we go. Bottom lane turret is going to go down. So the turret trade on various sides of the map but his Bloodthirster, Zerk Reeves, done for Yernin. Refused to recall, lost the turn anyway. Yeah. We're going to see Nuke Duck with a bit of free time in the mid lane. Pepe been grabbing his own blue. Nuke Duck is going to be scary. Yeah, 151 game. CS, 15 and a half minutes in. He has the highest CS in the game as Fizz. Yeah, against a ranged champion. Not often the case. But Italy will always be adding those spears. So if the, if the engages go long, mm -hmm then Forbidden will probably have the edge as long as he's able to actually hit Spears. But Nuke Duck will definitely have the higher playmaking opportunity. Absolutely. Well, there comes the Shark in the dive in. Good bit of damage, but Yernin's already there to stop in Holberto. Does not have the cooling. Use it to wave clear before he recalled last Whoa. time. So much exit damage there. And Mythic gets a cocoon as well, but that's not going to mean too much there. Javelin not going to hit either. All right, that could be a dragon. They just chunked out jungler and mid laner. Yeah, and you're seeing Ashiko already make his way down there. He's basically soloing it. Odom just kind of waiting around in the wings with a bit of ward control for himself, but Blade of the Rune King also done for Jax. Rejoins his team mid lane. Look at this, C9E with the first champion kill earlier on in the game, and now three turrets to two plus the dragon. Cloud9 Eclipse finally finding their way in the game. All right, so up until this point, there's been very low levels of vision for both teams. Now that they get that last mid turret down, it explodes for Cloud9. They get tons of wards on this blue side. If they're able to control the blue buff, that will be amazing for them because Fizz is the most fed champion mm -hmm. on NIP. They want to be able to have blue buff uh, controlled for themselves and they want to be able to use it with wow. Italy. There's the all in I talked about from his jump to be up in a few seconds. Zero Zero does not have flash. Leap Strike will get the kill, but here comes Nuke Duck. Ulti Papa Odwamna try to keep himself alive. Here comes Holberto as well. Odwamna doesn't really have anywhere to go. He's gonna get picked up. Nuke Duck gets the kill. So the team collapsed quicker for NIP. However, Nuke Duck gets chunked on the exit here. And then still trying. Can Cloud9 get anything for this, though? Good spell shit by Holberto. There's, there's not a lot of advantage they can gain from chunking chunking down Nuke Duck there. He should be able to just back in time. Uh, Freeze just picked up a little bit of free gold, taken out the white camp at the bottom. Watch this one again. Okay, so yeah, that's what I was talking about. It's painful as Rise versus champions who can all in you like this. Um, I had a very painful experience recently, Freak, as a, I was playing Rise versus Riven. And you lost. I just got destroyed over and over. I know the feeling, Zoro Zero. But Zoro Zero's teammates come to the rescue yeah. and make it even better than the even trade because yeah. it was assisted kill. So they got more money out of it. And, and it was money onto Fizz, which is always worth a lot. Exactly. So Zoro Zero still wave clearing 121 minions to him, not too far behind his lane opponent of Oduamna's Jax. But you're going to see a gigantic wave top, and Dragon's not on the map, nor are almost any outer turrets. So. There's really no counterattack for this lane. Okay, he's freezing once again. They gotta relieve the pressure at mid lane because that's where NIP are focusing most of their efforts right now. Zyra plus Nidalee and Lucian should be able to defend that. So this is a pretty safe freeze for them right now. Dragon not available. NIP are just sort of losing gold to that top lane right now. And you're seeing Nuke just kind of chill right here. Does have Lich Bane. Death Cap soon for Pepevin. Playful Trickster killing the minions rather quickly. He's going to be fine with this one. Zoro Zero waiting in the wings. Yarnin. Yeah. Good. It's a good preemptive rotation here from Cloud9. They know where the efforts are going to be focused from NIP. And they go to defend with Nidalee, knowing that he would have a hard time by himself. Jax continuing to freeze is now the target of Nuke Duck. 
Oh, he's low as well. Yeah, he tanked the wave to keep it frozen for a little while. Javelin's gonna land. They know Nuke Duck's there. Loses more than a third of his health from a single Javelin and says, you know what? Not gonna fight Jax. Just kidding. The mid laner fire, the plants come out. Yeah. Widow trying to keep his team in an okay shape. Looks like that'll be the case. All right, they got the good wave clear. Nuke Duck does go in for the Shark repeat. comes down, the stun lands. Wow, 1v1. Both of them low on health, but Oduamna gets the kill. Dang. Oh, satisfying lamp to the head sound right there as well. Definitely overextended there. Nuke Duck thought he was uh, hot stuff. Now they've got a full shove mid as well. They have control of the top and mid lane here. Great for Cloud9. Will we see the dive? Zyra's got ulti available. Wafer comes out from Draven. The there flash engage from Zero Zero. Big damage with the low on health. They're going to trade one for one so far. Lucian has fallen. In comes a TP from Oduam that finds a stun again onto Zoro Zero. Zero. Not going to find much more for this one. Just the one for one. The engage still from Ko. Forcing the flash from Holbert, though. Cloud Nine Eclipse getting farther ahead. They draw out the teleport from Jax with the all in, but we saw it in action there. A lot of disengage from this Cloud Nine team. Did cost them their AD carry though, as well as both of his summoners. So we'll see what else these guys can do now. Feral Flare did finally transform here for Ninjas in Pajamas not too long ago, actually. Fairly recent. I'm guessing 18 ish minutes. Actually, I can check the stacks. He has uh, eight Feral Flare stacks, so he's actually had that for a good amount of time. Yeah. Transform happened a little bit ago. Other than still going to try to wave clear in the mid. Odwamina is starting to make a lot more moves for his team though. 2 1 and 1. 75% kill participation. Ancient Golem still not done for Ko. He doesn't even care about this. He's added more stats to his to himself. Plus the haunting guys, but eventually that item will be completed. You know what's big item there is death cap for Nidalee. So yes. spears are gonna start being painful. The siege will be very hard for NIP to deal with, as is the Jack split push. We've already seen round two, Nuke Duck can't handle him. Mm. Round one was Zoro Zero going down, so Jax has defeated all challengers so far. It's going to have to be a two-man squad if they actually want to uh, take him down. And that would have to be a commitment from Nocturne plus someone else. So Jax right now can draw two, twice his weight basically, yeah. twice as many resources from NIP up to deal with him. And Cloud9 have a very strong uh, siege with Nidalee. So it's getting to be looking dangerous yeah, for it. NIP. C9E definitely have the tools for success here. We'll see if he can have these miracle mythy hooks. He can make things happen with himself. Of course. Yeah, I mean, NIP are definitely looking for the, the picks and the assassination. They have so much burst potential with yeah. Nuke Duck. If Nuke Duck can get his kill off and escape with his life long enough for his playful trickster to come back up, then that's the play that they're looking for. Let's see what these guys can find. Looks like mid lane again is the target. It's going to be the Lantern picked up. Odwamna off on the side as well. Can they find much Cocoon onto Mithy? The flay back, but it's not going to be enough. Kill picked up right there. Zoro Zero off on the wings, though. Slow comes out from Voidal. Help to keep the team alive. Zoro still in the chase, but it's not going to be much. Spiderlings, poor Spiderlings dying. Ko losing his brethren. Yeah, that kill is going to mean objective. Easy Dragon just coming up. Great timing for them. They'll also be able to siege up afterwards. Blue buff should be controlled. They have both of them, yeah, because they just... They were able to get both. That's ridiculous. This is going to be very hard to deal with. <laughs> Chase it down, Jax, too. Ooh, Zoro Zero losing a quarter of his health. Odwama jumps to the wall, puts the stun on. He's going to land it. Ko forced to run away, though. Can they find enough on a Zoro Zero? A couple hits from dead. Down he goes. Odwamna picks up another 6-2 now. Nuke Dog has to sit and wait as his team falls over. So, Cloud9 Eclipse. Yep. Going up against the same exact team comp this time around. They switch it up, they go Elise instead of Evelyn. They also were able to grab uh, Nidalee because they were blue side. Mm -hmm. So that helped out a lot. But I really think that their Jax power has been a, a very big uh, turning point here. When he got to use Jax against Shivana and beat Zoro Zero in lane, I think that just gave him even more confidence yeah. for the champion. And going back to that one has been amazing for Cloud9 Eclipse. Yeah. I like the changes that they've made to uh, to deal with this exact same team. Exactly. And if you're Millennium or if you're a super hot crew, you got to be like, you know, one of us is probably going to have to fight C9E. Mm -hmm. 
Duomna's pretty scary. You know, I feel like we should ban Jax in Champ Select. And you gotta start kind of thinking about what are the big deals here for these teams. What are the things that are scary? Nuke Ducks Fizz still. Honestly, he won his lane. He's still got a kill. Still a very scary champion for himself, Roberto. 101, getting a lot of farm here on Nocturne. Says back off, it's my red buff. Freeze doesn't get that one. It'll draw another really big force right here. 3 1 and 2. Big playmaker here in the top laner. Says, you know what, jungler? You're the support. I'm the carry. I'm a top laner. Deal with it. I'm Jax. And it has definitely worked out. He deserves the solo lane farm that he gets. As far as the ending it here, uh, it looks like they are just trying to control Matt Blue Buff here before they go for another push. Uh, and they're not even opting for Jack's split push. Even though his teleport will come right back up, they're so far ahead right now. The, the team fight is actually in their favor. So we'll see where they go with this one. The general composition for NIP is the 1-3-1 one, one with the double split push. Uh, C9E not really going to have that kind of setup, though. Needle is more a teamwork type champion. Yeah, definitely needs uh, some extra support to rely on for disengage, for extra tower damage while they're trying to get poke under it. I think that they should be just fine though. Yeah, they're just waiting on the blue buff respawn here. A lot of what happened last time too, even though you know NIP were running this exact same comp, it was the play, the mid-game play there after yeah. the two versus one swap, where they caught Ko extending into the jungle with the with the pink ward. Ko did not make that mistake this game. He stayed in his own jungle. Oh, here comes the hook though. A bit of a flank maybe coming in. Mythi goes down right away with the box and Zero Zero wanted a flank and then a recall saying, you know what, never mind, it's 4v5. But the entire team has shown up actually not even looking to split push, but C9E pull all five together. Still the wave here, still the ulti as well for Voidal is available. The minions are gonna go down, but turret falls over. And now they got damage now, 26 and a half minutes in towards the inhibitor, Odwamna. Going to see in the front lines, looks like Yernan will be able to take this one down. And the hip falls 26 and a half in with a five kill lead. Cleanest inhibitor that we've seen in a long time. It was the first one going down. Usually the first inhibitor is hard for these guys to get. But uh -oh. maybe it gets cut off. On the wrong side, but gets some rush to run through. Hilberto is going to back off. He's going to be fairly safe. No, big damage comes through with the Javelin. Not safe, not yeah, safe. Never mind, <laughs> Javelin with a vengeance right there. All right, they're not no. done yet either. Ryze has been chased down before. Hook not quite going to land. Nearly did with this one, but going to push in now. Mid turret going to take a whole bunch of pain. You know what I just realized part of what Zyra does is every time she puts a plant down in front of a turret, it's an extra turret shot that the team doesn't need to tank. Because turrets will shoot those before they hit champions. All right, look at this seeking. flank, though, from the backside. Yeah, I do like the, uh, the turret tanking power. Plant. Hook lands on the co. <laughs> He's going to be okay. There runs out of man on this one, but mid inhibitor now under siege. 27 and a half minutes in. Only one minute between these two. That will fall before 30. What a great start now. C9E looking great now in game four. Yeah. Not only can they add damage to it, but they'll take hits too. Yeah. Get two of those suckers up. I don't think plants shoot turrets. They shoot champions though. Make them back off right there. Good thing about Voidal actually is he upgraded all the way to Frost Queen's Claim. I mean, he can't disable his passive by last hitting minions, so he'll always get the gold generation from plants. Yeah. Very it's important 11 thing. minions to his name. Yep. Not Make all the ruins of it. Just to point out, Frost Queens did give him about 1,000 gold, actually. 581 from the passive, 400 from tribute. Hmm. Plus the active slow. Man, it seems like... All the games in this series have been really one-sided, except for the first one. Yeah. We had one first game, 50 minutes. And then from then on, it was... Uh, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 very, minutes. Very, very strong play from one side or the other, not letting go. This time around, it was definitely Cloud9. A well, bit of a juke there. No one going to cocoon, but the stun's still going to land for Odwamna. Here comes Earth, though. You know, it doesn't even care. Going to let you off the golems back to full health. No big deal. So top lane. Baron or the Nexus? What is the target right now? Baron! Doesn't get too much for it. Spider League's even all stayed alive for now. No one's around to stop Baron. This will be going to Cloud9 Eclipse. So Dwamna already pushing the top lane as well. Meaning we're soon going to see another inhibitor go down. And this could be the game winning push for Cloud9 Eclipse. Yeah, they're definitely looking to close this one out as quickly as possible. Running through with the blue buff and purple buff Nidalee. It will not take long. 
All right, desperate hard engage here from NIP. They need to go for it. They've only got one, and it's dead. And okay, down it goes. Maybe they'll hold in for the Nexus turrets there. Ulti comes in from Nocturne, but doesn't mean almost a thing right here. Box comes in, root onto Oglomna. Minions pushing in towards the Nexus. Here comes the engage. Dax a bit low, has the stun, finds Nuketuck with it. Forced to go back into the lines, but there's the Javelin. Takes down Freeze. More damage coming across. Zero Zero stunned up. He will be going down. Two kills, the Nexus turrets as well in under 30 minutes. Cloud9 Eclipse close the game and they take the series three to one. Congratulations to Cloud9 Eclipse. Yeah. Coming out the victors. I don't so, know. If you want to pick a team in the uh, promotion relegation tournament, yeah. how much do you take away from Cloud9 because they won't have Co? Well, I remember that actually they brought in a replacement jungler in Spring Series 2. They brought in IHAS, and they actually got 2 0'd by Denial. So actually, that was, it did hurt them at least in that one. Um, they brought him back onto the roster afterwards, saying, okay, let's, let's get ourselves to the playoffs with this one. Mm -hmm. So we do have some evidence of them being weaker without Ko. The, it, there is a, a hit right there because Ko is very, very good. But at the same time, honestly, you still have the rest of those lanes looking good. You had a duo lane that just straight up beat Freeze and Mithy. That was game two. They crushed the duo lane there. Voidal and Yarnin looked great. You have Febivin, who's a great Nidalee player. You've seen, I think, twice now how good he is on that champion. He's still scary. Oh, Dromna, by himself once again. Jax is definitely a huge threat. There's a bunch of giant threats still on C9E. This team came together as a group of top challenger solo queue players. And they were like, look, we're going to learn the team play. That's our big weakness. But they've been together the entire Challenger Series now. They've learned some more strategy, learned some more ways to play around the map. The players are all individually all-stars. Yeah, and their team play, this series, I have to say their team play was one of the bright spots. Mm -hmm. Everybody, they had coordinated plans, like you said. Yeah. In the first couple of games, they always seemed like they came out with some interesting little strategy. And it wasn't the same each time. No. They did not fall into a pattern. They did not become predictable. I really feel like this Cloud9 team is going to be really strong even without Ko. Yeah. And teams now have to weigh because of the way this series went. It's going to make that decision even harder. Yeah. Like, which one of these guys would you actually choose? Yeah. And that's really the, what it comes down to. And I think that choice comes to Super Hot Crew. I feel like whoever takes sixth place probably does pick Denial just because mm -hmm. we saw Denial just lose to C9E yesterday and we saw him lose in the Series 2 Finals to NIP a couple of weeks back. So I feel like that's still the first pick unless something changes in the next two weeks. But that's going to be the, really the test for these guys. And then, yeah, it's who do you look at? How does it go? We're going to find out. That promo tournament's in about two weeks. So, guys, the first ever European Challenger Series is in the books. Let's check out the three teams who fought their way through the competition and locked in their spot in the Summer Promotion Tournament. With their win here today, Cloud9 Eclipse has to be considered maybe the top dog here and are likely to be looking at a matchup against Millennium. That's because the TBD in the graphic isn't a try code. It's actually reserved for the team that finishes six in the LCS playoffs. They'll get the first choice of the challenger teams that they want to face, while the super hot crew will get the second pick. And with Millennium having to deal with the team that's left over. So remember, guys, you can watch the Ninjas, Cloud9 Eclipse, and Denial Esports fight for a spot in the LCS in two weeks, Thursday, April 24th. Now, if you're sad because you've reached the end of the road for the European Challenger Series, don't worry. The North American semifinals kick off tomorrow. Up first, Cloud9 Tempest <laughs> taking on Prawley and Complexity Black. After that, you're not, warring, not going to want to miss LMQ as they look for the clean sweep of the Challenger Series when they take on Curse Academy. Yeah, the North American Challenger Series spring playoffs continue Saturday, 9 p.m. Central European Summertime.